Project Daedalus explores the creative potential of drones. It's all about how you use drones in the art. It's a, sort of a year-long exploration into how cultural organisations can use this quadrotor drone technology. Project Daedalus primarily looks at taking uh, quadcopters and changing their roles in performing arts and through audience interaction with them in non-traditional ways. We're interested in trying to give guidance to arts organizations and artists, producers, curators on how they might use drone technology within their productions. The project is taking place through three different partners. So it's a Nesta funded project and as part of that you need to have a research partner, a technology partner and an arts partner. So I work across the research and the arts so I'm a creative producer with Abandon Normal Devices and then I'm a research assistant with the University of Salford and we also work with Marshmallow Laser Feast and they're the technology partner. Drones are a hot topic right now and I think everyone is trying to jump on them because the technology is quite easy to use for people who aren't necessarily tech-minded to begin with. By the end of the project, we'll have done a whole bunch of things with different people to build lots of useful components to help others when they want to start using drone technology. What's exciting about drones is how much is changing in the field. So every single week, almost every single day, there's a new story, a new headline about a drone technology that's come out onto the market. So I guess what I like, everything I do is around emerging technologies. So the new stuff is what always excites me. And every day I've got something new that a drone can do that it couldn't do before. We've been working with people in a school, so young women, 14 year olds, and we brought drone technology to them to see how they would work with it. And we also work with a group of adults with learning difficulties. So there we're ensuring that we're getting a range of voices and opinion throughout it. Artists have been using them or thinking about how drones can be used in a creative context for a long time. What do you use drones for? How do you use them so that they're more beneficial to society than uh, what people currently perceive them as being? Well, so far, drones have been used in arts contexts in all kinds of ways, either as dancers, as props, as actors, as entities that can carry objects, that can project light and sound. So there's all sorts of ways in which an artist might use them. And the technology that's developing around it is what's really compelling. So people experimenting with gesture control so that the person within a performance can be involved in controlling the actual drone itself. So this kind of experimentation, I think at this point, people haven't really figured out all the possibilities. We're still trying to work that out. We've been looking at things like drone developer videos. So who are they targeting things at? Who's missing? And as part of that, we discovered that there were very few women. And also there were no people with a visible disability. So as part of the project, we felt that it was really key to include these kinds of voices in there, particularly when we're looking at building a toolkit for arts and cultural organisations. And an audience for them isn't only white men in their 30s, it's everybody. So we wanted to make sure we had everybody in it. I think in the past few years, there's been more of a trend of technology being used in art. And I don't see that going away anytime soon. Where drones rank in terms of today's technology and art, I don't really know. I would say probably it's pretty close to the top. A lot of the research has gone into how do you take something that's been done with very accurate tracking system indoors and apply that into an outdoor uh, scenario. For us it was interesting to investigate how that sort of could be made more accessible. The technology side has been looking at 360 degree filmmaking and also tracking and control. So how you can control a drone so it does what you want it to do. Drones are one of the most interesting objects to use for 360 filmmaking because they just have a perspective that we haven't had before. I was approached by MLF to come up with a affordable, high quality 360 degree camera. The most exciting aspect of that is you have a performing arts uh, show and the audience member is able to look in whatever direction they want to. It, it would be as though you go to a theater performance and you're able to be on stage with the actors walking around looking at what they're doing in real time as though you were part of the performance. And I think that's something we've gotten used to a little bit in video games that hasn't necessarily translated over into the performing arts world is this idea that you yourself are an actor in whatever 
uh, show is going on. I watched a, a few videos online of uh, some of the best FPV pilots in the world, you know, and it just got me so excited. I really wanted to recreate that uh, experience of flying. Essentially, it's, it comes from, I guess, a gaming background. So a first person shooter, you know, so it's your personal view uh, of the of the camera, you know, so it is as if you were sitting inside the drone, you know, as if you were the pilot. I think anybody with a bit of soldering skills can do it to just build like a, a quadcopter or whatever, you know, and, and the costs have come down so much. So you can now put together a drone for probably 200 pounds, you know, in parts It's really quite cheap. I think because there's a real playfulness in there. So it, it excites people in different ways. You get very strong responses. So I applied as part of this research project to take drones to basically a group of artists. So a group of Nordic artists. And I knew that the response from them was gonna be drones, it's the military. We all hate the military. So I had to really carefully like couch it in terms of this is an arts thing and this is how you can use it in an arts context because people get very excited in kind of a negative way but also in a positive way because it's new technology. It's actually much harder to fly drones than, uh, than it would appear at first, you know. So I started building something and within the first few minutes I crashed my first drone and um, yeah, it's, uh, but it's fun and I'm getting better and better at it and um, that, that is really the exciting part, you know. It's definitely heading towards um, a quite scary perspective of uh, unmanned delivery for example you know and, and, and those areas and, and, and security for me is a big concern you know and and on one hand I'm really excited about the possibilities and on on the other hand I'm, I'm quite uh, worried about where it might lead us to you know and the thing that I, I think is really compelling for society and what really I guess concerns me a lot as well is the growing autonomy of drones. So at the moment, you can fly a drone manually, you can pre-program the flight path and it goes off and does it, but the next stage is what's called higher authority autonomy, which is completely autonomous systems. So we don't need the human at all anymore. The drone decides where it flies, what it does, what it captures, and it learns in the process. So this is not in the future, this is happening right now. This is the technology people are developing. So that era of flying robots amongst us that science fiction writers have imagined for decades is just around the corner. And that's quite exciting and scary. Thank you.